Hi everyone, in this video I want to show you three math books that I think are good for reading. I have lots of math books and some of them are better than others and I just want to show you three that I think are good to read. Okay, let me show you the books I'm talking about. So this is the first book that I think is really good for just reading. Now for a book like this you will want to have a paper and a pencil and just work through it and try to understand the examples in the book. So this is an older book, it's called Linear Algebra and it's by Serge Lang. So Serge Lang was a very, very famous mathematician and he passed away a long time ago. Here's the inside of the book. Linear Algebra by Serge Lang, Columbia University. That's a really good school. It says the present book is meant as a text for a one year course in algebra at the undergraduate level during the sophomore or junior year. So in my opinion, this is definitely a proof based linear algebra book. So if you're in college and you're taking a proof-based linear algebra class, I do think this would serve as a good supplement. Apparently someone used this for a class called Math 24 a long time ago. Linear Algebra, Serge Lang, Columbia University, New York, New York. Really, really cool. Oh wow, look how old this is. Copyright 1966. That is so long ago, right? Just amazing. This copy happens to be in really, really good condition too. This is the table of contents, which is really quite nice because it starts with really simple math. This is math that I think most people in say a calculus class or even before that could probably read and understand. It starts with vectors in Rn and then it goes on to vector spaces. And it really goes through it pretty quickly, right? You have definitions, talks about bases, dimension of vector space, and then sums and direct sums. Then it jumps to matrices, and then it goes into linear mappings, which are super important in linear algebra. Let's keep looking at the table of contents, linear maps and matrices, determinants, all kinds of stuff here, scalar products and orthogonality, matrices and bilinear maps, polynomials and matrices. So there's a lot of topics in this book that you won't find in other books. So it's a pretty you know dense book despite uh, how thick it is it's not very very thick triangulation of matrices and linear maps spectral theorem polynomials and primary decompositions multilinear products and then it talks about groups which is really cool i mean you could just open this up and go straight to page 242 and try to read it you could learn a little bit of group theory rings <laughs> it's pretty amazing convex sets and then some odds and ends you gotta love serge lang what a great author this is the very first chapter vectors in rn in this chapter we shall consider special cases of notions to be discussed in greater generality later in order to provide geometric and algebraic motivation we assume that the reader is acquainted with the real numbers and except in six by number we shall mean real number in this chapter Starts by defining points and end space, gives you some nice examples. I feel like the readability of this book is very high. It's very easy to read and it reads quite well. I mean, just a good book for reading. Here's an example of a really good proof in this book that I think is really clear and really well written compared to other books. It says, let V sub one through V sub N be a set of generators of a vector space V. And then let V sub one through V sub R be a maximal subset of linearly independent elements. Then it's actually a basis of V. And it goes to the proof and it's really quite clean. And that's something that comes up again and again in this book. It's that the, the proofs are, are just clean. I feel like they're written in a way that I can understand them compared to a lot of other books where the proofs are just a little bit not as clean and that's really what I like about this book just the way it's written something about the way Lang presents the topics and defines things makes it really really clear and while I think this is a great book it's certainly not a perfect book I do think this is mainly a book for reading if you want a book to serve you as a linear algebra reference I would definitely recommend something like the book by Friedberg as that's a little more organized and it's just easier to find theorems and easier to find information when you're looking for it Nevertheless, I think this is a great book for reading. It's Linear Algebra by Serge Lang. Okay, let's go to the next book. This next book is extremely famous. It was written by an electrical engineer and his name was Sylvanus Thompson. 
It's called Calculus Made Easy, and I believe uh, it was written around 1910. And what makes this book different from other calculus books is the readability, and that's why I wanted to include it in this video. Um, this book teaches what's called infinitesimal calculus, and he really explains things well. So this is definitely a book that you would want to read. Having a, a pen and pencil helps uh, a lot, but at the same time, you can read it without one, at least for portions of it. You know, there's computations and stuff, and there's certain steps where you might need to write something down. Here's the inside cover, Calculus Made Easy, Differential and the Integral Calculus. Sylvanus P. Thompson and Martin Gardner. And this is newly revised, updated, expanded, and annotated for its 1998 edition. So there's newer editions now. Uh, this is an older one. And obviously there's certainly older ones than this. This is just the one I happen to have. Let's take a look at the contents. To deliver you from the preliminary terrors <laughs> on different degrees of smallness, on relative growings, simplest cases. Next stage, what to do with constants, sums, differences, products, and quotients, successive differentiation, when time varying, varies, introducing a useful dodge. I love the, the choice of words. And there you can see the rest. It even talks about partial differentiation, which is really cool. Here's some more of the contents. Integration, integrating as the reverse of differentiation on finding areas of integrating, dodges, pitfalls, and triumphs, finding solutions, a little more about curvature of curves, how to find the length of an arc on a curve. And it has answers to the exercises. So really beautiful book. This is chapter one, to deliver you from the preliminary terrors. The preliminary terror, which chokes off most high school students from even attempting to learn how to calculate, can be abolished once for all by simply stating what is the meaning in common sense terms of the two principal symbols that are used in calculating. These dreadful symbols are, so one, d, which merely means a little bit of, thus dx means a little bit of x, or du means a little bit of u. Ordinary mathematicians think it more polite to say an element of, instead of a little bit of, just as you please, but you will find that these little bits or elements may be considered to be infinitely small. And then here we have this elongated s, which you probably know as the integral symbol, huh, which is merely a long s, and may be called, if you like, the sum of. So the elongated s with the dx means the sum of all the little bits of x, or this would be the sum of all the little bits of t. So ordinary mathematicians call this symbol the integral of, and then it goes on, and, and that's the main style of this book, which makes it, again, so good for reading. That's why I wanted to include it in this video. So I think if you're looking for a nice supplement to your calculus class that will just give you a different perspective, uh, this is certainly a good one and worth picking up. And you can probably get this for a few dollars on Amazon or somewhere else. It's Calculus Made Easy by the legendary electrical engineer and famous author Sylvanus P. Thompson. Really awesome. This last book is really special to me because despite the fact that I have tons of books, this is one of the few books that I've actually read in its entirety. I've probably done 90% of the problems in this book. This is Abstract Algebra, a first course by Dan Saracino, and I love this book. Uh, this is the book that taught me Abstract Algebra, and I've read pretty much the whole thing, and I've done most of the problems. Um, let's take a look inside this book. This is the table of contents for the book. It starts off with sets and induction. Then it goes on to binary operations, groups, fundamental theorems about groups, powers of an element, cyclic groups, subgroups, direct products, functions, symmetric groups, equivalence relations and cosets, counting the elements of a finite group, normal subgroups, homomorphisms, homomorphisms and normal subgroups, direct products and finite abelian groups, the Celo theorems rings, subrings, ideals, and quotient rings, ring homomorphisms, polynomials, and then the transition from polynomials to fields, talks about UFDs, which are unique factorization domains, and then some suggestions for further reading, and it does give you some answers. And so the big downside of this book is that it's not long enough. I really wish Saracino had made a second version, like part two, or included more topics because, again, I've read pretty much this entire book and 
I felt that I still needed to learn a lot more abstract algebra, and that's why I have other books on the topic. But really, really fantastic book, very well written. Let's take a look and cite it. This is the section on subgroups, and here we have the definition of a subgroup. He says that a subset H of a group G is called a subgroup of G if the elements of H form a group under star. And then he says here it's worth emphasizing the under star. For example, if you look at the positive rationals under multiplication, that's a group, and the rationals under addition is also a group. The positive rationals are a subset of the rationals, but the positive rationals under multiplication is not a subgroup of the rationals under addition, and that's because the operations are different, so it has to be the same operation. So little stuff like that is emphasized throughout the book, and it's written at a very elementary level, and I think that's what makes this a readable book. It's not that it's written in some special, unique way, like the Calculus Made Easy book. It's just a regular abstract algebra book, but it's written at a very beginner level. Having said that, there are other great abstract algebra books. The book by Frelay, uh, Dummett and Foote is a great book, but that is certainly a step up. Uh, the book by Beachy and Blair, all kinds of great books. But I feel that out of all of the abstract algebra books that I have looked at, this is the one that is perhaps, in my opinion, the most beginner-friendly book. Despite being a very beginner-level book, this book has great exercises. So tons of exercises here. You can see some of them are circled. So yeah, really fantastic book. I highly recommend this book, and you can get it for only a few dollars on the internet uh, if you just search for it on different websites. So those are three books that I think are really good for reading. The first one was Linear Algebra by Serge Lang. Again, I think the readability of this one is very good. It's very clear. Uh, for some reason, the proofs are written, I think, just nicer than a lot of other linear algebra books. The biggest downside of this book is that it's not a great reference when compared to a book like the book by Friedberg. Still worth getting simply for the clarity that it provides. The second book was Calculus Made Easy by Sylvanus Thompson. And this book is readable simply because it's written in such a unique way. There is no other calculus book in existence that's written in this way. It's just very, very different. Again, written by the legendary electrical engineer, Sylvanus Thompson. Worth picking up. And again, you can probably get it for just a few dollars, just like the Lang book. And the last one is readable, in my opinion, simply because it's written at a very elementary level. Um, just a great book. I love the Saracino book. I'm a huge fan. It's definitely my favorite abstract algebra book. I hope this video has been helpful to you, and hopefully it's given you some ideas of books that you can pick up for just a few dollars. I'll try to leave links in the description, but remember, if it's too expensive, you can just go online and search, and you should be able to find old copies really inexpensively. At the end of the day, it's probably not going to matter too much uh, which edition you get. I hope this video has been helpful. Good luck.